kids and everyone else, I'm so glad you are here today for another story from God's Word, the Bible, which we know is absolutely true and completely trustworthy. And it teaches us how to live lives that please, capital G, God. Last week, we began our study of Revelation, the very last book in the whole Bible. And it is a book of prophecy. It's the only book that hasn't happened yet. And it tells us what is going to happen when life on earth comes to an end. Well, we remember too that the disciple John is now an old man and he is on this prison island of Patmos. And while he was here, God gave him four very special dreams or visions. And the first vision we learned about last week was about the seven churches that were in Asia. And God reminded them that they needed to be devoted fans of him, the one true God. John went on and had a second vision, and we're going to pick that up in Revelation chapter 4 today, if you want to turn there now. John's second vision was about the coming of judgment for the world. And it has a fancy word. It's called the tribulation. It lasts seven years. And the Bible says it's going to be really hard to live during that time. There's going to be a lot of suffering. But even in spite of it being hard and there being a lot of suffering, God still has an offer for people to repent because we know that God wants everyone to be in heaven with him. And there will be people who say, I am sorry for my sin, God, and I don't want to do it anymore. And there are going to be other people who say, eh, I'm just going to go right on sinning. Well, vision three is a very exciting vision. I brought a sword to help us remember this vision because vision number three was about a great battle. And this battle is going to be between Jesus and Satan. And who do you think is going to win? Jesus. Jesus is going to win that battle. We already know that, which makes it so very exciting. Jesus is going to come back to earth and he is going to battle Satan. He is going to win. And then... Jesus is going to send Satan and all his demons and all the people who never asked God to forgive him of their sins to hell forever. And there will be no more evil in the whole entire world. And that can be an exciting thing to think about. This is called the second coming. Now, we remember when Jesus first came to earth, he came as a baby. And his job was to grow up and to be our savior. But when he comes the second time, he is coming as a conquering king. He is going to win that battle. Well, the very last vision, number four, that is in Revelation, is a picture of heaven. And it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth because it's going to be all destroyed in the battle, right? Well, in Revelation 21, it tells us what it's going to look like. It said the city was laid out like a square. It was the same width and height, but it also had a third side. It's actually the shape of a cube. That was the best way that John could figure out to describe it. And this cube, while mine is little, the new heaven and the new earth is so big that everybody that has ever lived that has asked Jesus to forgive them of their sin is going to fit inside. That's going to be a pretty big cube, don't you think? We will get to be there. And then John went on to describe how beautiful it was. He says, there is a wall all around the city, and it's made of this beautiful red jasper stone. And underneath that wall, there's another wall of beautiful, precious stones. And when you look at heaven, you see lots of gold, and it's beautiful like glass, and there's actually a street of gold, the main street. Like, think about Main Street at Disneyland being entirely gold as you walk down it. This is what somebody thinks heaven might look like, beautiful, lots of colors. In that wall that goes all the way around this city, it says there are 12 gates, and every gate is one pearl. Now, this is a pearl bracelet. The pearls are pretty small. Can you imagine one pearl that is the size of a gate at your house, your fence? 
big, beautiful. Does this help you understand our yellow heart? That is the promise for those of us who have asked Jesus to forgive us of our sin, is getting to live in that big, beautiful city with God forever, where there will be no evil and no sin. And maybe you wonder, who gets to go there? In Revelation 21, verse 27, it says that the Lamb of God, whom we know is Jesus, has a book. And in his book, he writes down the name of every person who asks to be forgiven of their sin. If you have done that, then your name is in the Lamb's book of life. And you can know that you will go to heaven because you know what? He writes it with permanent ink. You cannot erase or get rid of permanent ink. Your name is in there. And we get our names in there, as I have said, by asking God to forgive us of our sin. And we know that when we ask God to forgive us, he will do that. And while we wait here on earth, our job is to live like devoted fans of God. People who are reading the Bible and praying and fellowshipping with other Christians, being at church, taking communion. And one more thing. We've learned in other lessons, our job is to share the gospel. I've told you a little bit about what heaven looks like from the book of Revelation. Who do you want to be there with you? Do you want your parents, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, maybe some best friends that you play with all the time? If you want them in heaven, then you need to share the gospel with them. Every single week, I use my gospel hearts, as I call them, to share the gospel. And I do it so that you learn a tool for sharing the gospel. And I'm going to go through and practice it one more time because I hope this week when you go home that you will practice it so you can be ready to share the gospel with somebody, somebody that you want to be in heaven with you. So let's think through these. We have black, and we use black to remind us of sin, the wrong things that we think, do, and say. And it's those things that keep us separated from holy, perfect God. God cannot be around sin. The yellow heart also helps remind us of heaven and that promise that we can go there someday. Well, the only way that we can deal with our sin that God says we can't have is through blood. We have heard the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans, he said the cost of our sin when we do wrong things, it takes blood to forgive it. In the Old Testament, do you remember the Israelites would take a perfect sheep, a perfect lamb, and they would kill it. And on that first Passover, they put the blood over the doorposts, and that showed they wanted to be forgiven of their sin. We do not have to go kill a sheep because something better happened. Jesus died on a cross. He gave his blood so that we can be forgiven. Now, if we believe that and we ask, God, would you please forgive me of my sin? He will do that. And then it is as if we have never sinned before. And then we need to tell our friends, now your job is to live like a devoted fan with me. We need to pray. We need to read the Bible. We need to go to church together. And you can invite them to come here. Green also reminds us that our first job is to please capital G God because that's what the Bible tells us to do. But it's also so other people will want to be like us, and they will want to go to heaven with us. So I hope this week you will practice that, and you will think of some people that you want to be in heaven with you, and that you will ask the Holy Spirit to help you be brave and share that good news with them. We are going to finish our Sunday school year today with a picture of heaven, the very last thing in the Bible, and I look forward to seeing all of you there with me.